film is uh, Commitable, which is lovely. I saw it earlier this week. It's a, it's a great film. Um, Etienne, you wrote and directed the film. Uh, what was the inspiration for it? Quite a few things, really. Uh, sorry. Uh, a little bit of a cold. Uh, <laughs> um, for me, the thing was always, um, well, it started really with my grandfather. He was really ill, very old, um, and he had a lot of regrets. Um, and he told me that um, it was so sad to him that he is in a position now that he can't really do anything about that. Um, and that's a fear that I've had for such a long time, you know, to get to a point where you're sort of portrayed by your body. Um, because when you're young, your body goes faster, quicker, do more, and then you get to a point where you feel it's betraying you. And, I don't want to get to that point where I have regrets and I, and I can't really do anything about it. Um, so I wanted to sort of exercise my demons and then create these characters and then give them the opportunity to actually do something about it, to get a second chance. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of our regrets, or most of our regrets in life, or the most important ones really are the, the ones about relationships. Um, so I wanted to also see how love would factor into such a situation, to sort of a second chance thing. Mm. Um, the story uh, really was also, well, the other really important thing for me um, right from the beginning was this iconic image of um, a vent bomb, a windmill, which I think is such a South African and also very Afrikaans kind of um, icon. Um, but normally when I, when I think people, when we think about a vent bomb, it's sort of on a, on a dry, dusty plain somewhere, you know, um, and it's quite depressing. And I wanted to sort of show this icon um, in water with life um, and hope, and, and, you know, to be able to, and, you know, yeah, I don't want to give too much away about the story. Um, but yeah, I really just wanted to see that film form in a very positive light. Um, so that's really where that started, and you know, based on a couple of short stories in a novel that I've worked on. Mm. So Frankenstein of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long answer, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> but, uh, Greta, you, you I'm very happy to hear that answer because it gives me a lot of insight into the story that I might not have had before. Absolutely. In fact, that remark about the, the, wind, the windmill being in water is quite a revelation. I never saw it like that. I mean, it's quite a startling image of the windmill in Mm. Have you Beautiful. seen the film? No, the actors haven't, which is quite a good thing okay, because we see it, we see it fresh at the um, at the premiere, yeah. which is yeah. both terrifying and amazing at the same time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that scene when you do go down to the windmill, we we see the mm. pond with the windmill in it for the mm. first time. It's stunning. It's visually stunning. Mm. Really, I'm pretty it's sure it is. It's going to take the breath away. It really, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. It's very kind. Mm. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you played Tani Murphy yes. in the film, okay? Yes, right. um, what were your feelings about the character when you first read the script? Well, I immediately clicked for the character when I read the script. I just, she just jumped off the page for me. You know, that doesn't often happen. That's happened to me once before that I've had a character, or twice before that a character's jumped out at me. So, as an actor, you instinctively know, okay, I know how to do this character. And often you clearly say, oh, how the hell am I going to do this? And this one is just <laughs> bang, and uh, I can see this character. Yes. So it was really good fun for me. So I didn't have, you know, then you're not nervous about doing audition or anything. You just go and you think, okay, mm. I, I, I don't care if I, don't, if I get the role or not. Let me do it the way I feel it. And thank heavens I did get the role. <laughs> <laughs> not only now realising how lucky I was. <laughs> Some of the funniest scenes in the film um, take place outside your house with the yoga, the old people doing the yoga. Oh, yeah, that was funny. Seriously <laughs> funny. Uh, what, what did you think when you first read those scenes? Talk me through filming those yoga scenes. You just hurl yourself into it. There's no time. You're working very quickly. Fortunately, I do yoga myself. There's no time to think, oh, what am I going to do? You just go, okay, go, let's do it. And you just do it. You know, it's like, it's like jump, jump into the deep end. There's no time to debate about what you're going to do. Yes. And thank goodness I have done yoga. For, you know, I didn't have to go and do research. You know? <laughs> <laughs> really, she was really good at the yoga. Yeah, yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, were those, did those scenes end up the way you've written them, the way you saw them in your head? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, much better because the thing is, um, because she was so good at the yoga and she really loved um, sort of take control of, the, of these, um, not take control, but yeah, take control, yeah, of, take control. of her students. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and she had these students and she actually yeah. helped them. And, and I didn't have to go, maybe speak to this guy, you know, it was just Murphy doing a thing, you know, and she was so great at that. So we got uh, some really cool outtakes and stuff as well that we'll probably put on the DVD eventually or something, but it was it was wonderful, it was really funny and I just didn't want to pull cut because it was, everyone was enjoying it so much and morale on the set was just sky high after yeah. that. So. It looked like such fun scene to shoot. It was, it's not often fun to shoot, to shoot uh, scenes in a movie, mm. especially not funny ones, but in this case, one didn't see it as comedy, we just thought this is a task, this is a yoga class, you do it, whether it's funny or not. We, the aim wasn't to make it funny, the aim was just to do it. To do it, It's funny and wonderful. That's, that's, that's the best way to do it, because it comes off as natural. Anyway, I can do comedy is to fling yourself into it and 
and let's and make it as real as possible and if it's funny, great. Yeah, it works. It works really well. <laughs> um, talk me through the dual casting of of Michi. Yeah, with Maridi. Yes. Um, so with younger, um, the younger version of Michi, um, it was important for me that we find the proper creator. In fact, it was creator for me from the beginning, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. um, so we needed to, to know that we had creator, and then we could start the casting with, um, for Maridi. Um, I met Maridi on, on Clan Karua. She was someone's date, someone who worked on Paul's dates, and, and we spoke a little bit, and she mentioned that she's into acting. Um, and we actually considered her for the role of Margot for a little bit um, when she came to call for Margot. Mm. Um, and then once Greta was, was on board, Marie just sort of, she became the obvious choice, you know, because she has this really wonderful, friendly, warm personality, much like Greta mm. as well. And I think more than just um, them physically looking similar, um, it was more about um, getting a similar feeling from them. Because yes. I think the audience who gives you for so much um, of the physical stuff, if you, get, if you, if you believe that they're all the same person, we, Regardless of that kind of stuff, yes. and that's fine. So that's why Marie was got. She was mm. wonderful to work with. It was mm. her first film as well. Mm. She does it really works nicely. It's great. Um, a lot of the time in films like this, where you've got the, the dual characters, you know, the dual, mm. dual actors playing the same character. I mean, he, in, in Looper, they went so far as to changing um, Joseph Gordon Levitt's face so that he looks more like Bruce Willis. What do you, did you do with um, Marie to work to try and get you? You know, to, for it to be the same character, was it just an organic thing or did you actually... We, did, we never had to play in scenes together, so mm. that was something that you just have to leave to the director because your scenes are shot separately. Uh, I was just very flattered that he chose somebody who said pretty, well, was much prettier. <laughs> and, uh, and then it's, uh, it's over to the director, really. the, the actor hasn't really good. Unless you've got scenes together, mm. there's, there's really very little control you can have. But did you do anything like working on mannerisms so that you got the same kind of mannerisms and movements and that type of thing, which they've done in, in, in other forms? I, I think there are, if, you, if it's, if it's, sorry, I'm popping my head. <laughs> if it's a huge role and it's the leading role and these two characters are the leading roles, then you have to do that. Mm. But I think in our case, because we were support, supporting characters, we could rely on the director to actually mm. use his vision to try and, and, mold, and mold the two characters. Mm. Mm. I have to also just say on that, um, the thing that, that Marie and I did was I wanted Greta to create the character for us. So Marie did a lot of, uh, she used to be on set sometimes, Greta didn't yeah, even, even there. know about it. She would no, come, come later and say, <laughs> yeah. I mean, she'd come after the scene and say, Greta, you're great. You mm. know? She didn't want Greta to feel self conscious, um, you know, that she's watching. Yes, she, yes. she would sort of get tips from that. Um, but I also really wanted the characters to be quite different, especially for Marie when she was a bit younger, that she was a bit. Um, like the way she laughs, for example, we mm -hmm. love that laugh at the, at the fire as well, you know, that she, that we have to see that her becoming this almost completely different person, and she's so addicted almost to this, to this water, um, that yes. it allows it, that she's almost drunk on life when she's a uh, muddy. Yes, yes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the younger version of your character? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, but, but you, you know, I mean, you read the script, oh, so you know script. what she what she's like. Oh, I, I think it's perfectly written. I mean, the, 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 it's, a, it's an excellent script. I'm going to be very curious to actually see a performance, because as, mm. as you know, I haven't seen the film yet. Yes, yes. I actually can't wait to see how that gels. Mm. The two, the two, the, the two, uh, the two tiny, uh, the two monkeys. You know? <laughs> I, I, I really, I mean, I think that'll be a revelation. Yeah, it's lovely. It works. It works. It comes, it works. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure I trust this man, man in this piano, oh. it's going to work. Oh, <laughs> um, one last question. If you went back, um, if you had the, the pond and you could and you could really do your youth, in the film everyone's got a specific thing. I mean for Margot it's her dancing and for you it's boys. <laughs> and for Rousseau it's, it's his hunting. Yeah. What would yours be? You talking about me or your character? So it's you as, as a person. As a person it would, me, it would be me going back to being a young actress doing an opening night in her full powers, not being nervous at all, and doing <laughs> things, thinking she's the best and the strongest and the greatest in the world. Because mm. we lose that with time. Mm. You know, you, you are at your best probably when, in a way, I'm, I'm talking from feeling of, you know, ignorance is a little bit like bliss when you're young. So when you're 21 and you're playing a huge leading role on stage, you are terrified, but also it's a very powerful, mm. amazing feeling, which I think is a little bit like what maybe Armand and Leandia are experiencing. That amazing thing of doing your first big roles yes. that disappears as time goes by. I wouldn't mind just going back, being twenty-one and, and doing that one of those big roles again, and just feeling that amazing feeling. Yes, yeah. The curtain opens and the audience goes. Amazing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and it's like the first time where you just can't believe you see you're on such a high. You just cannot believe that you can actually be comfortable on a stage and feel in a way the audience is with you, that you mm. feel in a live performance. 
if you actually feel you could, you can almost control what they're doing, and and and, and that is the most amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. It really, really is, and, and it's difficult to get that back. Mm -hmm. I'm sure one could possibly, but yeah. it is difficult. Yeah. It's a nice one, sir. Well, <laughs> it came really into my head in a second. I don't know where. Of course, I was glad I asked the question. <laughs> You must have a, a certain feeling of that as well, because I mean, this is your first major feature role, uh, like, for your feature uh, directorial debut. I mean, this film started off as an after project and then developed into this, this feature project with an international um, connection. So you must have a, an idea of what we're just talking about with that. Yeah. Absolutely, I think that's why it was so awesome to hear that. Um, because so I, it yeah. must be how you're feeling in a way. Yeah, no, this is this huge, scary. huge thing that you're doing. Because it is. In a, it's, in a way, a debut film is a big thing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's huge. It's forever going to be the one. Yes. You know, it's never mm. going to. You'll never have another one. Like you'll never this. feel the same way. You'll never feel the same way. Right. After this, everything you, will be done. Trust me, done. you won't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to try. I'm gonna try. You, have to, you have to feel something like that, but never quite that, that incredibly intoxicating feeling of what is happening yeah, here. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> what am I doing? Scary. But it's happening. You yeah. sort of almost. I don't know, because I seem to remember one of the roles I played is that it's almost like you feel somebody else is doing this. Mm. And, and it's quite a powerful feeling that it's just it's actually happening. Yeah. You're almost watching yourself doing this, thinking, wow, that's cool, it's actually it's happening. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Mm. It's very true. You know, just, like you said, it feels like someone else is doing it sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's very scary. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of worried about the, the moment that the film sort of hits theatres, you know, because then there has to be some kind of decompression or something. I'm actually more worried about that than the, than the, than the because I like working and being busy and just feeling like I'm doing something. Like the road trip now, I can physically do something, I can physically drive somewhere and talk to a thousand kids about our film, you know. I think once that's gone, then this will sink in a little bit. Um, and I think then I'll probably start freaking out, you know. <laughs> it's like after an accident, you only start sort of shaking and trying yes, off. Yes. I think that's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> so stick around for that. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, it's fun and I enjoy every second of it. And I'm grateful for absolutely everything. Mm, fantastic. What is the overall message that you'd like the audience to step away from the film? I think the most important message for me is that. Um, and uh, again, I don't, want to, I don't want to give too much away about the story, um, mm -hmm. is that love can take any shape or form, you know. Um, I think it's such a rare thing to find love, is love, or someone who loves you, or to actually love somebody. It's, love is such a corny word, but whatever, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a sort of cross your path, my question is always, do we have the courage to acknowledge that? Because I think a lot of the times we're just sort of afraid and you choose not to see that. Um, so I think the message of the film would be, if you are lucky enough to get it, just go for it. And you know, don't let um, the shape or the form or the, or the ideas of what it should be influence um, the way that you feel about someone or about a situation. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's very, <laughs> sounds stupid, but that's... No, 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 no. no I, I, I've seen the film and it makes complete sense. <laughs> 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 and the message does come across, I can tell you that. Thanks, that's Honestly. Nice. Thank you, that's great. That's good news. <laughs> it's in Greta, thank you so very much. Lovely. Thanks very much. Yeah. All the best of the film, it really is a fantastic Thank film. you, we appreciate thank it. Thank you so much.